Okay, what's up guys? Uh, episode 2 of Ask Obsidian. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about why your vets are moron, which probably sounds a little bit, um, you know, controversial, but I'm not getting at the fact that your vet is a moron per se themselves. I'm getting at that I'm getting more and more of vets offering behavioral advice, when in reality they know little to nothing about it. And, you know, it's causing problems, so... Um, let's use separation anxiety as an example. <coughs> Basically, people, oh, if you're wondering why I'm back and forward, I've got a camera here and a camera here for um, to put up onto YouTube later. I don't know how long it's going to record for because my phone's flat. Yeah, so vets, um, being morons. Basically, separation anxiety is the example I'm going to use. So, the vet. You, you go to your vet and say, my dog's got separation anxiety, what do I do about it? And they're going to, some vets are going to be great and give behavior advice, you know, and talk about leaving them for short periods of time and crate training and teaching them this and teaching them that. Other vets, however, are going to go down the route of, oh, just give them these meds and it will shut them down. It's not ideal, is it? I mean, come on. So I, I wanted to get into that briefly. I'm getting more and more questions that my vet, my vet offered this, or my vet said this, or my vet said that. And it's great if you, you know, if you go there and your dog's torn a cruciate ligament, or I don't know, injured themselves, or got a disease, or a virus, or something, then yeah, the vet's obviously going to be great for it. But for behavioural advice, like, let me just read off this a second. So, Bachelor of Veterinary Science modules. Individuals and population, management of disease, normal structure and function, professional, clinical, research and business schools, public health, and welfare. Year two, disease process, blah, 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 management of disease. Year three, public health and welfare, clinical rotations. Year five, clinical rotation electives. Behavior isn't a part of a vet's um, studies, and nor is... Um, Okay, some vets drive me insane with this. Yeah, so behavior is not part of a vet's studies, and neither is nutrition. Um, you know, and that makes it that makes it difficult because I think people go to the vets and expect that advice to be uh, true. Because obviously, a vets, you know, veterinarians are highly qualified people. Should be giving good advice, and they do. You know, they give great advice, but not for behavioral things. So yeah, um, that's all I wanted to talk about there. Uh, okay, that's not a question for this live stream. That's a question of another dog trainer that's completely unrelated. Um, okay, that's going to go flat, so I'm just going to talk to this. Okay, uh, Felix, I don't know if you're watching this or not. How long have I had my business page? Um, I set up this page maybe, I don't know, four months ago, something like that. Jackie Law, hello. Lindsay Ann, hello. Jody, hey. Katie, hey. Uh, questions, guys, drop them in the comments. Um, I've got some that were sent in earlier. I put that post up. But if you've got any that you want to go at now, just, just ping them over. Um, okay. Jesse Cartwright, hello. Um, there was a question on. For those of you who don't know, I've got a, a group that's for free dog training advice, just for pet owners and things like that. Um, where is the post? Okay. I have two male dogs, a Jack Cross Chihuahua who's five years old and a Staffy who's five months old. When I brought my Staffy into the home, my other dog was absolutely fine and both of them together were fine. The pup always play for, but my older dog never bothered. Now my Staffy towers above the Jack Chi and they had their first proper blood drawn fight. Okay. Um, so... This is a management issue for me, you know. <sighs> what I would imagine is that your Jack Cheese pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. Your staff is older. You know, the Jack Cheese is going to be annoying, Bailey's. Annoying to a dog that's that much older. Especially if he's calmer than the, the little one. So, <sighs> management. Take them out for walks together, you know, side by side. They don't have to interact massively. They don't have to be doing loads. Um, check out Grisha Stewart's Behaviour Adjustment Training. Um, check out Michael Ellis' Philosophy of Dog Training. 
about reward markers and continuation markers. Um, that's going to help you massively. Basically, you need to mark can behavior, mainly for the pup, to be honest. I, I know the staff's causing the problems now, but I would bet my bottom dollar that the pup caused them originally. So yeah, just be patient with them. Let them, let them re-gauge where, where they're at with each other. What can I do to keep my dog entertained with training? She's getting bored within the house training, but loving the outside training. She train outside more. You know, I, I get that she's got to train inside. And um, lift your value of reward inside and keep the sessions shorter and more fun. But if she wants to, you know, if she wants to do more training outside, I know a lot of your problems are outside, so go for it. How's she getting on, by the way, Jody? Put a comment in. Jackie, vet should stick to physiological problems. Horror stories are here regarding advice. Yeah, massively. And like I said at the beginning, I don't know if you were in by then, Jackie, but the most common one I hear is separation anxiety. And they're like, oh, give them this pill. You know, like, I don't know what it's fucking called. Basically like a, a calming pill, which the bottom line is going to be a sedative, isn't it? I think it's just not remotely addressing the issue of separation anxiety or the issue of aggression or reactivity on nerve. It's just a great way for to mask it. The unfortunate thing is that owners often want to just mask it. They want the problem to go away, you know, at any cost. Also, after all, vets are running a business, so a lot of vets, every problem is because they haven't been neutered. Oh, God. Ah, speaking of neutered as well, yeah, vets are a fucking nightmare with this. I saw a post earlier. I don't know where it was. I don't know, in a German shepherd group or something. And vets advised me to get my female spade at four months old. And it's like, fuck. Come on. I, I get it that you're getting pushed on this. And the powers that be are probably telling you, Khaleesi, stop. Dog's are licking us off, been annoying. Um, yeah, I get that the powers that be are pushing it, but, you know, come on. Um, oh, nutrition as well. They're really bad for that, like Hill Science Plan and Royal Cannon. Because the, the bottom line is that they've got affiliations with these companies. So if, people try, if the vet's trying to push a diet on you or a pill on you for a behavioral issue, it's time to bog off. Sarah, hello. Jeanette, hello. I'm about to take in a Staffy Bull Mastiff mix puppy into the family. I have Jim Shepherd, one year old. Any tips to work in a good routine or just have a good introduction between them? Um, Jesse, I mean, it, it depends on the dogs, I guess. Some dogs are introduced really, really easily. Like when I brought the Rottweiler back with my greyhound, basically I, I let them have a sniff of each other and they were good. My Shepherd's not super dog friendly so that took longer but um, if you've got any um, reservations about it or you're a bit nervous about it or you know if you're just a bit touchy then just take things slowly it will come right even if for an amount of time you've got to keep them separate or only introduce them when they're out or only take them for walks together or only under supervision you don't leave them it's fine you know, like we all have a different um, a different path and speed that you can work out because it's great that the dogs can work at x speed but you have to be comfortable too because if you're not you're going to start flapping and you'll start reading into things that are probably not there or you'll miss things that maybe are there so yeah that's what i do jackie drug them and not train them yeah exactly jackie it's a nightmare and i guess for you guys like you and darren as well you know you, you put a lot of work into training your dogs you have some good dogs and it must be frustrating when you uh, see people going for that muzz hello How's it going, bud? I uh, thoroughly enjoyed your picture of Demon earlier. However, I saw that Drea said that she might have written that caption. So. I'm saying nothing. Okay, what are the questions I've got from earlier? Muzz, hey, buddy. It's nice to see you in here, Muzz. Muzz, everyone. Actually, I'm going to... Uh, two seconds. I'm just going to link you up to Muzz's page because it's really cool. For those of you that are into working dogs, facebook.com forward slash. I assume it's just Muslim TV, is it? Like that. Yeah, Muslim's got a channel where he streams a lot of the um, working dog trials. and I'm surprised you haven't gone to do some work with um, Jackie and Darren yet, Muslim. They do some really cool stuff with um, anti poaching dogs. Okay, next question. I'm rambling. Thoroughly enjoying the Baileys. Uh, what's a good Khaleesi? Be quiet. Af. Come on. Make an effort. 
Oh, so I want to talk about um, Sandra. Hello, Kelly. Hello. Um, dog, should it, basically, someone said, should they be able to leave their toys out with their dogs? Um, yeah, must get acquainted for sure. Um, Nick, yes, I have an. E I'll go back to my story in a second. Nick, yes, I have an email. Um, it is this. Or you can just drop us a message on the page or my contact details are on the website. Helen, hello. Nice to see you here as well. Great to see another trainer that shares knowledge of training and behavior. Yeah, Sarah, I think it's important. Um, I get that we all have a business to run and people have got to pay me money to, to get time, but you know, it's no skin off my nose to sit here for 20 minutes on the night and help people with bits and bobs. Conan, is a dog stretching a lot a sign of pain? Um, I think it's a bit above my pay grade. You better have to talk to a physio about it, but I would say a dog stretching lot is probably a sign of tightness. Um, have a quick look into canine massage and um, how to how to help your dog stretch and stuff. Um, has he been doing a lot of work recently? Has food changed? Could be a variety of things. Like I say, a bit above my pay grade. Yeah, should dogs be allowed to just be with their toys on their own? For me. The answer to this is no. But if you've just got a pet dog, you know, and they've got no behavioral problems and there's nothing wrong with them, they're not fighting, they're not resource guarding, then yeah, by all means, you know, it's it's easier for you when you've got real life to go to to just let your dogs play and play tug with each other and stuff. The reason the answer is no for me is because I want the association of engagement and enjoyment to come out of my hand, not from another dog or from the outside world or from the toy box. Because as soon as I've got that engagement, I can, I can work a lot more on advanced things. Um, but yeah, if you you know if you just, just got a pet at home and um, you, you're busy, then yeah, cool. Jody, oops, I leave jazz with the toys. Like say, Jody, the, I mean, it depends what, how far you want to go with your training. If it's not causing a problem, then let jazz enjoy her toys. But if you're struggling with engagement, then that's probably because she's getting a lot of enjoyment elsewhere, and. You should probably top, stop that. What else we got? What else we got? Let's go to the fire. I'm going to take some questions off the uh, off the group. Just done that one. <clears throat> oh, it's Jade. I'm in need of. I'm in desperate need of help. My brother-in-law recently bought a dog for his kids, and after a few months decided he didn't want any more. Well, he's a fucking idiot to start with, like before we even get into this. Don't get a dog and then just decide you don't want it. It's not cool. Uh, I knew it would be my next uh, three kids, but I was prepared to do it. He's a nine-month-old shih tzu. The problem I'm having is when he first arrives at my house, he starts to pee and poo everywhere. <clears throat> Anything... Oh, and on anything that I took. Okay, so he's peeing and pooing everywhere. Khaleesi, af, get on the floor. <sighs> I have a German Shepherd that's desperately wanting to come out. Khaleesi, enough, af. She wants to get involved with the lime stream. So he's peeing and pooing everywhere. Okay, uh, Lois, I think this is a... This is a fairly straightforward one, for me anyway, in my opinion. People are going to disagree. What I do to toilet train new animals in the house is I crate train them, but that has to be an enjoyable experience because otherwise you're going to get separation anxiety and they're going to chew their tail off and, and not literally, or well, maybe literally, but you know they're going to start trashing the cage and barking and crying. So teach the cage patiently. And then after that, the second the dog wakes up, I take them outside and we stay outside until they've peed and or pooed. And the thing that I hear most commonly here is, but she doesn't do it. And it's like, cool fucking story. I said, we stay out until they do it. Might take five minutes, might take 10 minutes, might take two hours. And I appreciate you have a real life to go to and I don't. But that would be my best advice there. Take her outside until she's peed and pooed. Mark it, reward it, bring her back in. Take her out, repeat, and just rinse and repeat the whole process over and over. It's a fairly straightforward problem. It's just a really, really annoying one because she's peeing everywhere. 
I agree, I've rescued five dogs just now. Nick, that's awesome, dude. Well done. Conan, my dog's always been really friendly. However, he started going for dogs when they go near my child, which is hard as I always walk them together. Is there anything I can do? Yes. Check out, the same as before, check out behavior adjustment training by Grisha Stewart. If he's got, just answer me this, Conan, before I go any further. Is he going for dogs as in kicking off and being vocal, or is he going for dogs as in if they get close enough, he's going to rip their head off because they're meant to have very different behaviors that often look similar? Let's wait for Conan. Hopefully, he heard that. I need to get a less poncy glass for my uh, <coughs> poncy drink. Quiet now. <clears throat> Rip their head off. Okay, so you think this is flat out aggression? I would get a behaviorist in as soon as possible. If it is real aggression and you're not misreading it, then this is a difficult problem. Um, the reason it's difficult is because the consequences of making a mistake are so high. You know, if he will actually fight, the consequences are, are really quite high there. You're going to have problems. However, engage, disengage. Check that out on Google or drop me a message after and I'll, I'll send you some stuff. Um, behavior adjustment training. And but all you're trying to teach is a new association to being with this child and having another dog close and being calm. So you have to condition that response. <coughs> Put a dog at a distance where he's cool. It might be five meters, it might be 50 meters, it might be 500 meters. I don't care where it is. Start at that distance. You're completely cool. Train with him, interact with him, engage with him, mark and reward, and then let him move closer to the other dog. Don't bring the other dog closer to him. So the other dog just stays still. It can, you know, it can mooch around and whatever it needs to do. But you're gonna have to set this up as a scenario rather than just finding someone in the park because that person in the park's just gonna fucking do the wrong thing. And all of a sudden you've gone from I'm just gonna engage a bit here to the dog's like stood on top of me and you have a fight. <clears throat> as you move closer, if he keeps engagement with you, he can look at the other dog, but as long as you don't get locked, mark, reward, mark, reward, mark, reward. Move closer, move closer. The reason I won't put punishment in this is because it's a conflict-based behavior already. So there's conflict between this dog being near me when I'm with this child, and um, then there'd be a conflict between when this dog comes close, he tells me off as well. So there's a bit of a, an, an iffy one there. One minute. Khaleesi, af. Get on the floor. I just took my headphones out there because um, my mic's on here. So if I shout at the dog, it's going to be loud. Okay, I hope that helps, Conan. But it's a, it's a complicated problem. James, hello. Shannon, hello. What am I sipping on? Bailey's and milk, dude. Ponty drink known to man, but I love it. Melissa, hello. Cool. What else we got, guys? Questions? Otherwise, I'll just go back to the group. You know, I want to cover some decent stuff in this. Jamie Webb, hello. Um, because I, I don't want to be that guy who just does a Q&A and answers three questions that are not remotely useful. Like James's question of what am I drinking? Because no one really fucking cares. German Shepherd wasn't well socialized, answered that. Sorry. Okay, resource guarding. Oh, Kelly. What's your best advice for dogs that lock eye contact with other dogs due to overexcitement? I would guess that that's been what we call locked in prey. <clears throat> they don't bark, they don't do anything, they're just like... And it goes up and up and up and up and up and it becomes a nightmare. Um, I would catch it earlier. So, you have Apollo, right? I think it's you with Apollo. If it's not, I apologize, I'm sure it is. So when he looks, just as he looks, if I cancel that, go back. Teach him a really strong eye contact command. Because um, if he's got that, if he knows that looking to you brings high value reward, or play or engagement, um, you know, anything like that, then he's, he's going to want to do that habitually more often. Yeah, it is you with Apollo. And you also fucking love that dog. Um, as soon as he starts flocking, give him his word to look to you and mark and reward it. You've just got to break the behavior early. What will start happening is that he'll, the response will be conditioned for him to chain that behavior himself. So he'll look and he'll go, I know what I should do here. Think. Pay you attention. You'll mark and reward. 
eventually the lock-in will just go out. James, hardest trick or command to train? Trick? I don't really train tricks, dude. Um, I think teaching a, a very accurate heel position can be difficult. Uh, I think teaching dogs to judge threats appropriately can be difficult. Depends on the dog. You know, if you've got a dog with massive prey drive, or you've got a dog with massive food drive, you can lower and shape any behavior you want. If you've got a dog with no food drive, then it's going to be rough. Shannon, my dog has great leash commands. Recently, she's been ignoring me when she sees a squirrel and she pulls me around. But as soon as she cuts you, she goes back to focus. Shannon, write your email address in these comments. I'm going to add you to my email list because I've just sent something out about um, impulse control and squirrels in particular. But it goes for anything. You know, if anyone else is watching, they've got problems with chasing birds or kids or dogs or bikes. Or, it's all the same. What's happening is that your the reliability of your recall is not strong enough to override the desire to chase the squirrel. So you need to proof the behavior and teach impulse control. But I've got a, a really good email about that. So pop your email in. Jesse, birds. Yeah, same thing, same thing. Melissa, what can I do with my boys? What can I do with my two boys is that as soon as they're in the same room together, they both start growling until one of them attacks the other one. Is it over anything? Or, or is this any room, any time, any place, anywhere? Because if that's the case, they need reintroducing, um, you know, into to build new association with each other. I'd keep them completely separate. I'd take them for a walk together. I'd keep them completely separate again for another 24 hours. I'd take them for a walk, and I'd repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And then over time, I'd let them interact in the house under strict supervision. As soon as one growled, they'd be split up. Because if they're growling, you've gone too fast and the association hasn't actually been changed. Um, so just very slowly, slowly treat them as if they're brand new dogs again. That's what I would do. Jesse, love the emails. Thanks. I'm glad you do. I mean, a lot of people get offended with them because, you know, they're full of swearing. And I think my point of the emails was that I wanted to keep dog training real because so many trainers... You know, not not all trainers, obviously, but many of them are stuck on. It should be this way, and I'm a professional, I'm a behaviorist, and I train dogs in the countryside, which is grand. The reality of it is, even as a trainer, I get pissed off with my dog. I get pissed off with our progress. I make mistakes. She messes up. You know, it's, I want to try and keep it more real, so I'm hoping that that's, that's the case. Okay, we'll call up on questions again, so let's go back to the group. Oh, that's my live stream, I don't want that. How do I get rid of this? There we go. <coughs> um, if I've not said hello to anyone, by the way, I apologize, but for some reason it only brings a few of your names up. Oh, angry faces, get a grip. I mean, unless you pressed it by mistake, in which case I mildly apologize. Oh, permission to post. What's this from Casey? No, oh, that's not a question. So free dog training advice is my uh, little help group if any of you need to be on there. New dog owner and not pro, so I'm learning all I can. Yeah, that's awesome, Jesse. And, uh, you know, as am I, as am everyone. Robin, hello. I think you're back to university now. Shannon, let me just copy this email. Bear with me, guys, because if I don't put Shannon on this list now, I'm going to completely forget. For those of you that don't know, I have a free email list where I send out emails every single day. Okay, it fucking solves on. Moz, why are you not on this list? Disappoint me. Uh, okay, you're on. Shannon, it says confirmation required, so go into your junk mail and look for a confirmation email from me. <sighs> Kelly, thank you for the information. We'll start doing that. He's recently started to lay down when a dog approaches and locks eye contacts, but as soon as he walks by another dog, he forgets about the dog. If he's off lead, he completely ignores the other dog since focus is always on me. Yeah, I'm sticking to my original diagnosis. Give it a try, let me know how you go. Kay Anderson, what would you suggest for teaching a puppy to walk nicely on the lead and not pull? She's only been allowed out for walks for three weeks. Last few days, she started pulling. Loving the emails. Thank you, Kay. Appreciate it. So uh, be fucking patient. If she's only been allowed out for three weeks, then I'm guessing she's well under 20 weeks old. In which case, patience is of virtue here. You know, you just, 
Don't be putting any punishment into this. She's a really young dog. You can't punish a dog when they don't understand something. That's my opinion anyway. You know, if the dog doesn't get it, I can't be like, you did it wrong. And they're like, cool, I don't know what to do. It stops dogs being operant, which means that they're not going to try and guess what the behavior is that you want. They just end up stopping. They're like, I don't know. So yeah, teach her a position. And teach her it statically, you know. So just stand still and teach her that being by your left side brings lots of good food. And then start teaching her to walk nicely on a lead in a house. You know, maybe take three or four steps. Being next to me brings you good stuff. Being in front of me, pulling, brings you nothing. Um, Pete, hello. And then, you know, as you get further on, she'll start understanding that being here brings reward. And you can start adding corrections in for being out of position. But just just be patient. You know, she's she's very, very young. It takes time. Okay, next. Oh, Rachel, this was a good question. Oh, this is something I'd like to talk, Rachel. Talk about, sorry. Um, Dougley's on six, 10 weeks rest for a break. I'm looking for more brain activities to do with him. So brain activities in the house. I've talked about this a few times, but it's not what I want to talk about right now. What I want to talk about is a method that Kat Clark uses. I had her on Trainer Talk, which will be live soon. I don't know when. Um, She's a big fan of keeping adrenaline levels down in the house and teaching them to relax. She doesn't shape or do brain games, etc. during rest. Think any low-key, choose sucky type Kongs, nothing to be thrown, trashed, or launched around are her favorite, but also depends on what you put in them. Anything fat-based is going to give them more energy. I think protein is probably best. Um, I like this philosophy a lot. So that's a problem I have. I don't, I don't think Jay's on tonight, but if she is, she'll know that this is a problem I have. I used to train a lot in the room where my dogs relax and it, it creates exactly what you heard earlier you know dogs crying and whimpering and <clears throat> being annoying because she wants to come out and train wherever you relax with your dog try and keep it as low-key and calm as possible you know they just lay down you maybe do some emails chill out and nothing really goes on because if you don't you're going to end up with a dog with association that we work here just the same way that any of you that are doing more advanced stuff know, as soon as you walk onto the training field, the dog's energy goes up here somewhere. Um, I like that philosophy a lot, and it's something I'm trying to practice more, which is why they're both boxed at the moment, and they're both going to remain boxed until we can. <sighs> okay, Amy Gold, I've answered that. I think we're about done. So I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes for any more for any more, because I've covered everything that I want to cover. We're at a half an hour, Mac, almost. Um, so yeah, I'll just give you five minutes, guys, if you've got anything else. If not, all good. And uh, episode two will be complete. Just check that I've not missed anything. Conan, make sure you definitely get in touch with the trainer about that. Um, I mean, by all means, drop me a message. I'll try and help where I can. But Shannon, no email. Oh, God, I've missed loads. Shit, sorry, guys. I'll get to you in a minute, Shannon, sorry. When doing only training, would you use my canny collar or do it without? I would just put on a normal collar, Charlie, personally. She's only 15 weeks. Enjoy your Baileys. I thoroughly enjoyed my Baileys, Kay. Thank you. <coughs> Shannon, no email. Okay, Shannon, drop me a message now, and we will sort this out afterward, after this live chat. Nick, very good info, mate. Glad I watched. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Joe, hello. You're, uh, you're late to the party, bud. We're about to leave. Kelly, get on his email list. Full of helpful stuff every day. Hel helpful's maybe ambitious, but it's full of stuff. No, no, I do try and make it helpful, but I also try and make it funny and, you know, relatable because dog training's turning so fucking boring these days. <clears throat> okay, guys. One more minute. If you've got any more questions, ping them over. If not, I'm going to uh, sort this email out for Shannon and then uh, feed the dogs. Life for dog trainer. Oh, let's just talk about this before I um, leave. Gill in dogs. I don't care what your opinion is on this. Factually, dogs cannot rationalize complex behaviors. We know this. This is, you know, this is a physiological fact. The, the, I put this up, I don't, I don't know if you saw it. The uh, guilty dog. 
but it's not guilty. It's fearful of consequence. This is conditioned response again. Connor's just commented on it. I don't know what it says yet. I came back from work once. My dog emptied my basket of cleaned iron washing and placed it on a pile on the floor. <laughs> yeah, so he gets it. Some people on here have been like, oh, my dog's guilty. I'm like, cool fucking story. You're wrong. You know. It's just the reality of it. Dogs cannot feel complex, rationalized emotions. But they, they have the rationalizing skills of around a one and a half, two-year-old. So I want to clear that up as well, because there's a lot of people arguing on something that will, it's not my opinion, it's just a physiological fact. So I think that's that. No more questions coming in. I think we're good. Five, four, three, two, one. Cool, we're good. Okay, guys, thank you all for tuning in. If you are not already on my email list, go to this link. I'm going to try and pin. That I should have done at the beginning because I'm an idiot. Pin comment. So that should be at the top of your comments now. Click on Seven Day Blitz. Put your name in. Put your email in. You'll get a confirmation email. That'll be sent out. Lorraine, you are way too late to the party. I'm really sorry. I'm leaving now. Um, yeah, put your name in, put your email in, click the confirmation link. You'll get 10 steps to a better dog in seven days. And then I'll be sending you daily emails for the rest of your life until you decide to unsubscribe. So that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you for tuning in.